The sharp tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And today, I have the honor, the blessings of being in the presence of a real one. We have Mr. Bill Haney here, ladies and gentlemen. This one right here, man, is I'm very excited to do because I've always, like I said, I've always admired what you've done for your kids, for your family, you know, so to be able to sit next to somebody who's been able to change, that's a power, that's a gift to be able to help change somebody's life. You know what I'm saying? Not, not just your own, but somebody else's, you know, that speaks volumes to me, man. How are you doing today, brother? Man, I'm doing amazing, King, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, uh, um, it's it's uh, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah. It's, it's been a great Ramadan, you know, Ramadan Mubarak, right. you know, as, as right. well. So um, it's just, you know, we're looking forward to April the 20th, for yeah. one, uh, yes. Devin Haney April versus 20th. Ryan Garcia. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and this, uh, what we call a super fight, uh, two, two guys in their prime getting it together. Mm -hmm. But it's always a pleasure, and especially an honor and a pleasure to come over here with you hey, man, at the I Sharp Tank, you, you know I what I mean? You, well, man. the real Sharp yeah. players and sharp chicks yes. come on and sit down with, yes. with a legend within himself because to watch you make this transition to now be in this place where and and, and have this platform that uh, guys like me can come on and let everybody know what's going on yes, and uh, the thing that I'm, I'm so prideful is the fact that my son is the best fighter in the world Devin the Dream ain't he Man. and uh, he will it, it's one more step towards the Mount Rushmore of boxing mm. uh, for him and Ryan Garcia um, Ryan Garcia is a tough competitor. They've had a 3-3 a amateur grudge match, so to speak. So to speak. This is the seventh uh, fight. This is the one that's deciding. Seven. This game is game seven. seven. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Ryan Garcia, uh, you know, I think everyone's been hearing a lot about his antics and stuff like that. That's not the Ryan Garcia that I know or we're preparing for. Uh, the Ryan Garcia that I know is a, a real fighter, a fighter that has uh, what we call a good night Irene, uh, you, you know, uh, it can <laughs> get him out of there. You dig? He can get him out of he there. He can get him out of there for sure. What do you think of all these antics that have been going on? Because like you said, that's not really the Ryan Garcia that we know. What do you think is going on? Do you feel like this is a publicity stunt? Do you feel like he's... Because to me, honestly, I, I feel like, and this is just my opinion, I feel like he's, it looks like he's trying to almost back out. Cause like going crazy. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. The the going the going crazy. You know the I see dead people fucking shit. I don't know what he's been on, but he's been on a crazy. Like I feel like he's trying to have that doctor and get him out of there to say he can't fight for due to mental mental illness or problems that he may be having. I feel like he's my personal opinion. I feel like he's scared of death. Yeah. Well, I, I really you know, do. Um, you know, a fighter. You know. Um, Anyone that's representing any, you know, the boxing community, something that you've been doing all your life. Mm. Uh, Orion Garcia, who represents the Brown community. Yes, uh, and, and me knowing anything about uh, my brothers, my Brown brothers, mm. when it comes down to the money, I've never seen them turn away from it. You dig? There's a whole lot of money on the table. I think that he's choosing for, uh, choosing some antics as a distraction. No different than that phone ringing. Uh, no different than... Floyd himself, Break Break yeah, no, no it. different than Floyd himself uh, coming out and saying that the Ryan, Gar uh, Ryan Garcia versus Roly Romero, who just got uh, knocked out the other day, was going to be a big fight, a bigger fight than necessarily a Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. We know that it's a lot of powers that be that do not want to see Devin uh, make that next step towards the Mount Rushmore boxing, right. being the real uh, money man of the division. Yeah. We've put we put deals on the table for not only uh. Uh, um, Shakur Stevenson, uh, we've put deals on the table for Tank Davis. I've heard Trump um, went down and knocked on his door before. Hey, listen, man, you know in this game, Y'all that's what you got to do. You know, I gave him some news they could use. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, know yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and, sure. and let them know that it was some money on the table. Yeah. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? For them and their fan base, it wasn't, they weren't ready for it. Ryan Garcia raised his hand, but he also said, came with some stipulations. One of those stipulations being that he's now wanting to embrace uh, different movements. Um, you know what I mean? And I don't want to judge none of them. I don't want to get in the middle of them, right? That's, uh, to me, not boxing business. 
Um, mm -hmm. He says that now he's feeling about that while he has this platform between um, this big, great opportunity where people are looking to now start talking about these other things. Man, I said, listen, if we would have known that that's what you were going to do, then maybe we, would, we, we as a team would have looked at it different. But being that we're already, you know what I'm saying, in the process of this fight, we know that now, okay, that's just a distraction. You know what I mean? So you feel like if you would have knew this before that the whole team, DHP, would have took a whole different direction? Yeah, well, we would have just told him that, that we would have put some stipulations in there and said, okay, are you going to, for X amount of, of time, you know, be on the fight? Or are you going to be, what are you going to be? And, you know, and then it would have, it would have been something that would have been clear cut. And if you would have said, okay, well, I'm going to use the fight and I'm going to use this as an opportunity to introduce all these other things, then when you ask me that question, I'll say, it's calculated. It's part of the promotion. Right. So the thing that we're, we're blindsided by is that no one traditionally doesn't do what this guy is doing. So I'm going to assume that he's educated, knows what, what he's doing, and I'm just, just trying to get us off of our thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so you, you say you, you hate that this is happening. You feel like this is really not part of boxing. You don't want people to feel like this spectacle that's been happening as a part of boxing. Devin has been preparing himself. He seems very motivated. And I like how he even sat down in the press conference. He was like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. He's like, these are, there's young kids that look up to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So and I like where his mind's at in this. Absolutely. Absolutely, Sharp. And that's, these are the times when you really get a chance to show how great you are by the way that you deal with the distractions. You dig? So whether he shows up, he doesn't show up, he do, does whatever he's going to do. Devin's next stop is, you know, taking over the broadcasting network, taking over um, um, the fan base, taking over the arena. And that's whoever sh shows up. You know what I mean? We came for it all, man, yeah. period. And and Brian Garcia and the rest of the guys are just, um, you know, stops on on Devin's way to the Mount Rushmore boxing being mentioned amongst the greats. If he if if Ryan is deemed out, is there is there anybody that's already scheduled that, that will be there for that fight night? Yeah, well, it was a it's it's a guy uh, that was on this on the stage, um, you know what I mean? That was hungry as a low ball wolf, looking mm -hmm. to you know step in and you know like anybody else in that position with everything that's on the line. Devin is hungry, so why it wouldn't be another person? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think the thing about Ryan is, um, is he hungry or? Is he or or is he is he is he playing? You know what I mean. And on April the the twentieth, that's going to be decided. I cannot wait to see what comes of that one because my money's on Devin. I've actually went to Devin Andy fight. I've I've came. I've supported. I think it's amazing what you've done with them. Like I got a question for you. Uh, what was your upbringing like for you? Because we see how you've raised your son. You know, let's give the people a little insight on you. Well, uh, you know, I grew I grew up in Oakland. You know what I mean. Okay. Um, yeah. And it, and the area. Yeah, yeah. Town business for town sure, business. for sure. All day, every day, deep East Oakland. Mm. Um, but you know, within that, um, even in our community, my mom was a Black Panther. You know what I mean. So, um, yeah. So she represented, um, you know, a, a being a strong Black woman. Yeah. You know what I mean. And she knew that. You know, she explained to me no matter. Um, what, you know, it's going to be somebody that's just not going to like me for the color of my skin, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, that I'm going to just have to just, I'm black and I got to be proud and just that's what it's going to be no matter what. And um, through that, growing up in Oakland and knowing that, and then having examples of independence and even in music, whether it be 40 or short, you know, two guys that I know personal, personally, yeah. you know what I mean, Richie Rich and, and all these guys who have always um, been an example of independence. You know, so to go back to Oakland, where we don't have any Crips, no Bloods, no none of that, mm. and to work for somebody would be um, would be not the BH way. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. You know what I mean? Straight uh, up. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, like I always say, you know, growing up in Oakland um, means the world to me. When you, you know, when it's town business, it's, it's in you. It's not on you. So I'm gonna take it wherever uh, I go. Um, I wanted to move out of Oakland. Uh, to give my boys um, a better start than me because I wanted to be really their big homie, uh, this, the big homie that I didn't have because my big homie gave me um, drugs and guns and shit like that, you know. Um, and and I knew that I was able to do more, but he didn't see that in me, you know what I mean? So I wanted to make sure that when I had the opportunity to pick one, 
I wanted to pick mine to be my son's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, and then and then get behind whatever that's in them. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that they passionate about. You know what I mean? Because my big homies, they pick some guys. I just wasn't one of the ones they picked. Yeah. So I always said, you know, when when I got on, I wanted to be example for for the other homies to go back home. You know what I mean? And grab your son or grab your daughter because they need you for real, for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not just um, sometime, but all the time. It's a, I, I believe I had read one time that how Devin got in the box, and I believe he was getting into fights at school or something like that. Man, Devin was terrible. And, and you said that you didn't <laughs> believe in, you don't believe in hitting your kids. No, because it that. ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It ain't going to work. Devin you know? was terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> terrible. No, I mean, really. I want people to know he was bad or being described as being bad, and that's the thing that I want you to know most is that sometimes that kid that you can say and just fighting – all the time, I took him to the gym. And I, I initially thought, I said, okay, well, this will, will let him know that if you know how to, I mean, it's some real kids that really know how to fight. And when he went to the gym on the first day, the coach, after it was all over, it said that there was a natural. Mm. And I had never heard, I had never heard that uh, term being described before um, with him because we was on the football. That's my, that's my, what's up, loved one? You all right? You know, we over here real sharp. We're sharp. You yeah, dig? Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's skin. He from, he from L.A. So my family. You, you, yes, sir. So you took yeah. him to the boxing gym. Yeah, so. He said he was a natural. So, absolutely. So, when, when I took him to the boxing gym for the first time, mm -hmm. um, Devin, to, you know, it just happened to be a kid in there, coincidentally, that was a like Muay Thai kind of kid that knew karate, but he was working on his stand-up game in boxing. So we put him in there and, and he had on some Velcro shoes. Look, you know our kids, you know, they wear the shoes that they ain't tied up yeah. and it ain't all tied up. You know, when Dev got through with him, the, the kid went that way, his shoes went that way. And the, and the trainer, he yelled out, your kid is a natural. I said, I looked over there and I looked at my guy, you know, cause he still got that just, mean look on his face like he still ain't satisfied and everybody else is <laughs> like you they smiling you dig what i'm saying they said he's a natural with yeah. it because after all the fighting and all the ass whipping that he didn't did to get to the top he's still hungry still hungry and through that competitiveness and that natural ability that he had how many other kids are being misdiagnosed or misrepresented Ooh, you know tons, what I'm, tons thousands. right thousands so so we wanted uh, our story to resemble something that everybody can go and go do. You know what I mean? And and that doesn't mean that we didn't meet, you know what I mean, very successful people with hella five companies that we could have partnered up with. But I think that that would have watered the story down and, and created a narrative that a regular guy that believes in his son and his son believing in him couldn't make this shit uh, happen and get cracking yeah. with it. You know yeah. what I mean? So you believe if you wouldn't have got him about Oakland, your kids would have been on some other shit. You already seen the future ahead for them. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? And I think that it would have, it, whether they would have or not, I would have been behind them. So we was going to get cracking with it sooner or later. And you know what I'm saying? It was going to be what it was going to be. Right. Just like it's going to be in, in Vegas or anywhere else. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. I just knew that based on, um, you know, how I was being represented in, in Oakland and what they were going to have to live by, you know what I'm saying, there, I said, well, let's just um, give them their own fresh start and their own identity. And they started kicking ass from there. Yeah, because he, I ain't gonna lie, he's a, he's a bad man, but he's respectful, very uh, humble. I got the chance to uh, catch back up with him. I interviewed him at the BET Awards. Yeah. I stopped with him for a yeah. few minutes, got to chop it up with him. You know, great kid. Man. That's the, that's the Bay way. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That's the Bay way. And I always tell you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? There's some real players up my way, and they don't for they sure. don't really get credit for a lot of times that what we do and how we represent, you know what I'm saying, in general. And it's and it's not always um, easy, you know what I'm saying, to stand alone, you know what I mean, and do it the way that we do it out to town and be, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, it's more easier to say you're a crip or more easier to say you're a blood or, or affiliate, you know what I'm saying? But when you see town, you know what I mean, you say, um, standing on business he gonna stand on the right if he with you he with you and it don't matter the color of the flag if we down with you you know what i'm saying you are our folks our family you know what i'm saying we gonna ride and and i and that's a test to um our mamas and and daddies right. the way that they 
you know what I mean, a lot of that that panther and 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 you know what I mean, a lot of that you know other the mother letters, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. um, that have inspired and embraced um, guys to to represent. And I think I might be one of the ones that have a platform to kick it. But it's a whole lot of other guys just like me that's going hard about their sons. You know what I'm saying? They're in the trenches. And I'm, I'm telling them, keep grinding, king. Keep grinding, queen. You know what I'm saying? Your time is coming. My son right there, you know what I'm saying? I wake him up. He's 14. Sean, what do I say about 163 and 1? What do I say? Are you what? Yeah, I ask him. I wake him up every morning to go to tennis. I say, are you number 163 or are you number 1? Because the other day in tennis, I, I told him the difference is that you can be 163 in the world and, and be slotted in a bracket that you end up playing against the number one player in the world and beat him and be that guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Be recognized that, okay, I beat that guy, and then you got to go from there and going from there. And so I wake him up every morning. I say, okay, you still 163. Is you ready to beat that guy? <laughs> so we get at it. You know what I'm saying? We get at this shit just like we – um. Got at it with boxing, yeah. with the one thing in mind, to, to being the best. So um, I think that that's what being a Haney is. Uh, my father taught me that. My mother taught me that. You know what I'm saying? And I and, and Oakland, and I represent it. So you know what I mean? We just live this shit every day. Speaking of represent, uh, what's your take on the current event, like the Diddy situation? What's your, what's your take on all that, man? I mean, you know. As, another, as another black man, well, you know, just. Yeah. What's your take on him and his situation right now? Well, different strokes for different folks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, when Diddy had his his chance, he wasn't talking about BH. So, you know, now I got my <laughs> chance. You dig what I'm saying? I'm going to talk about BH. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I ain't going to talk about him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, hey, that's respect. <laughs> I ain't even mad at it. You, man, you've been having, let's talk about it, bro. You've been having bread way before Devin even started boxing. Yeah, he was already on. So they, does it take money to put these kids in these in this shit, these situations? How, did you have any other business endeavors, things like that, that you were into before? Not nothing illegal, church. Mm. Just saying. No, 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 no. With, with with no, with all due respects, I mean, I stopped caring about money a long time ago. Yeah, you know what I mean. And when I stopped caring about it, I just couldn't get rid of it. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I love that shit yeah. right there. Man. Yeah, you know I what I mean? I just, I don't care nothing about it. You know what I mean? It just always seems to follow me. You know what I mean? Because let me just tell you, though, sometimes, though, money you dig when you really got your priorities on and you 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 on, you on top of your game, mm -hmm. money can be a distraction for you. You know what I mean? Right. And ultimately, me being a Muslim, you know, um, paradise, you dig? So um, I know what the what the ultimate place and the ultimate gift is, comes from Allah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then the distraction being the money. You know, so obviously, you know, you know, money is a good thing. It's it's, it's there it's to help thing. people. It's there to help people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not necessarily there for you. You know what I mean? So when I mastered when when I mastered that part of it, um, you know, it just none of this shit is a problem, man. This shit is easy. Do you feel like you've taught Devin to master the same traits or master the same thing? You're teaching him like, hey, man, money ain't everything because he's a multimillionaire. You know what I'm saying? He's great at what he does. He's undefeated. Ain't nobody fucking with him. Do you teach him them same traits that you did? That, hey, man, money ain't everything. Do this because you love it. Don't do it just because you can make some money off of it. Yeah, fortunate for him, like I said, boxing and him found each other. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was like a marriage, you know? Yeah. It was like a it was like a cowboy finding a gun and, and a horse. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, he just, he, just, he just rode off, and it was just a beautiful sight to see them from that very first day in the gym to where he, he is now. And it's not that we ever tried to duplicate that, you know what I mean? Because yeah. that came so natural. Just like when my when I saw my my son, my youngest son, swinging a tennis racket for the first time. No one else in our family had swung the racket, and everybody else that grabs it, they don't swing it just like he swung it for the first time. So, right. um, you know, uh, Devin has, has has a different passion um, about about the sport of boxing. That money, you know what I mean? The the when I look in the yard and and I look at that Lamborghini and that Virgil and that that four mm. by four and and all that shit like that, you know what I mean? That Cullinan and all that mm. shit like that, and I see him and I say I say, damn, you know, um, the kid got a lot of distractions that would be, I mean, they got a lot of things that would be distraction to a guy that's not living in his passion and his purpose. You mm. dig? He's living in his passion, what he likes to go do. That's that's his way of getting away from all that what everybody else considers 
right. you know, fly shit. Right. It's to go into his element. And and of course, when you when you live in that, you living in your passion, and you getting paid for it, then you know you happy. Yeah. He would. Uh, they tried to stop you, bro, from uh, going to Australia for Devin Haney's like against uh, George Cambosos, right? Yeah, they tried. Listen, what the fuck was the problem? What I don't know, but you know, we turned we turned a uh, um, a tragedy or some somewhat tragic situation and finding a silver lining that I got a chance to see Devin. Um, go to Australia as a man on his own. And he told me, it's like, he hugged me in the airport and said, Pop, I'm going to go get these belts and I'm going to bring them home. So for you, you know what I mean? See how you can smile and say, damn, I, I lived that. That's I lived that. Yeah, but I, I got a chance to live it and see him do that instead of it being like you never get a chance to see your kid become that man that you know that, that he's going to be through all the jewels and gems that you've seen him get along the way. So I got a chance to see that. And then in the 11th hour, you know, three hours before the flight, they, they call me and tell me, get ready to go. So, you know what I mean? It was an amazing feeling to then actually go there and what my son get on, on the mic and the first thing he says is, alhamdulillah, you know what I mean? And then says that he, would, he, he loves the moment, but he couldn't see having that moment with nobody else other than me. That's deep, bro, and that's that's special to have that bond with your son like that, man. That he didn't want to spend that with nobody else at that time, that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, to have that togetherness is everything. And by the way, he whooped that boy's ass. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Went over there and played on his land because he was talking all that shit, talking about yeah, let's fight over here. No, no, and, no, not no problem. And you and you know what? No just problem. to just you know to make sure that the listeners kind of understand because I I think that the father and son thing when you when you hear it is it it can pe it can appear to be kind of harsh in the sense of it's hard to have a whole lot of lifespan in the father and son because a son then becomes a father but i think it's definitely three parts to it where as as a very young man i was his protector and then in the, in those middle years i became a teacher and then these years you know i'm i'm his friend you know right. what i mean we right. have a hell of a friendship and through that, you know what I mean? I know that, like I said, those moments he's went to Australia. Of course, those moments when he got his, his first apartment, you know, I didn't maybe sleep as well. You know what right, I mean? Right, but right. by the time he got still that, baby, bro. he's still, still my baby. Yeah, right, right, right. I don't care how right. old he gets. And, 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 and any, anybody that gang bangs you, you care about or you wonder, is your comrade all right? Or... If you, your brother or your Aki or your whatever, you know what I mean? No different than that, that same connection that, that I have with all my, my, my sons. You know what I mean? And it wasn't about, I told him, I said, well, guy, he was like, what's up? I was like, well, man, if you who you are, then you will have to break away from that because I'll carry you as long as you need to be carried. You my guy. I'll carry you. Like I didn't carry brothers in the street like I didn't been carried. That's part of it. But when you can stand up and you on your own, then... Well, go ahead and handle like, it. Why do you feel like that element's missing today in the streets or in our culture? You know what I'm saying? That element of like, hey, if you my guy, you my guy, I got you. I'm here to help you. I feel like that's that's missing now. And I feel like that's why there's a lot of misguided young men out here is because that trait's missing. Of just even meeting a guy up the street or a dude at the liquor store, he's just taking liking to you, man. Always trying to give you some game. Always trying to give you some news you can use, you know? Yeah. I feel like that shit's almost died. It's dead, bro. It's done died out. You yeah. know, where these kids, they're going crazy. You know, look at Devin. A, a kid that somebody's been hands-on with versus look at some of these kids out on the street. They don't got nobody being hands-on with them. No, abs no ab absolutely. But I think that you know, it still have you have opportunities like coming in the shark tank and, and the shark tank and really um, hammering home that players, gangsters, you know, the rappers, the um, musicians, you know, they need to go home and grab these youngsters. You got jewels. You got at the house. You you really have um, stars at home and not in the sky. You dig? Mm. Yeah, that's cold right there. <laughs> Cause yeah. I understood that. No, but don't go over the head, man. That was <laughs> that was some cold game. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Were you uh, were you ever tired to be a man? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I've never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm, asking, Church. I, I gotta listen, ask you. Man. Listen, I've never been asked that question. That's 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 
That's crazy. But you know what? Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. No, Mother yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm happy to say that, you know, on your show, mm -hmm. that I represent the, the, the part of it that got away and not the part of it that, that, uh, that got caught. And mm. getting away means. Can you getting, say one more, just, just one more time, Church. I you said, represent I, the part that. That got away, not the part that got caught. Mm. But and, you want to leave it there, or you want to keep talking? Well, well, with and no, but with with that with that saying is, yeah. it's not a whole lot of um, talking uh, to be. You know what I mean? To be mm -hmm. said, if you really represent what you supposed to represent, then it's a whole lot of work that you're gonna been and seen a motherfucker put in. You know what I mean? And if you take that same attitude of family and apply it to your family, then you might be looking like the Haney's, yeah, you did. just tell the truth. You was that nigga in your time, church. You was that nigga in your time. Like, yeah. you, like I said, you was but, already having bread. You was, so I don't want people to think, like, what's the, is their relationship based off of Devin having bread? This nigga been having bread. Yeah, but All see. All money. Nigga. Right, but see. said he don't give a fuck. But see, when you got the, when you really got the kind of money, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show in the, and your offspring, and it's going to show in the kids. You know what I mean? It's going to show and how much fun you done really had when it's time for you to kick back and watch and chaperone and be, you dig what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's, it's different levels of this shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I think that, you know, as time go on, goes on, um, you'll get a chance to really see what this family shit really represent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and yeah, I'm, I'm probably the one that's fortunate enough to, to have a platform and and say something, you know what I mean? But it's a lot of, like I said, yeah, I said it's a lot of brothers that's, that's living the shit and breathing and not getting their flowers too. So I'm, I'm, I want to give everyone else their flowers, not for doing what, what T, I was, I was on the couch with T um, for my, my mother's uh, funeral. I was, at, um, I, was at, I was at Big T, Big T house, and I went and slept, uh, slept on the couch just because I, wanted to, I only had a little bit of time to be in the city and I want to make sure I spent some time with him, you know. And the one thing about T and what T represents now that's different is, is um, not putting yourself in, in a way, in a position that you won't be there for your family. Mm -hmm. Be there for little T because, you know, T and the family, everyone else can watch a part of the movie and say, okay, you know, that's fly and all the shit. But when you get that kind of time that bro had got, you got that kind of time that meets has gotten, then, you know, the family can only really tr tell the story. You know what I'm saying? Really right. tell, right? So as as young, I mean, you can tell that so I couldn't go. To, you didn't want to be a story. Well, I mean, I had, just like Australia, you know what I mean? The world found out that I had already did some time in 1992, so I'd already been to the federal penitentiary by the time me and T and, and all them was running around. You know what I mean? So I was the one that was a young dude being from Oakland telling them, Dog, y'all doing too much for them bitches, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, yeah. You dig? So, y'all already got big. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah. So, so after, and I tell him still then, I said, all right, you see, I, nigga, I don't be doing all that for them bitches like that, dog. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to throw mine in there and trying to just do anything and just crash out. Like these yeah. niggas be talking about crashing out, doing, getting felony after felony, getting it stacked up around you country. That's ignorant. That, man, come that's on, ignorant. man. Come on, man. Listen. And now, the, and now the girls are running around here with more jury on than the guys. And, and then, you know, y'all running up and around, that, going like that, that, that um, revolving door, right? Where you go and go do 10 and 12 and you come back home and you trying to get back to the club to do something for, that, for them chicks. Man, come on, man. Y'all got to knock that off, man. <laughs> I've been, man, I've been right here, man. I've been watching y'all, man. Y'all got to knock it off, man. It ain't that serious, dog. Man. Hey, oh, everything yeah. I love, bro. Man, come on, man. They got so much fake ice and fake diamonds and all that shit <laughs> like that. Man, I'm talking about to my real hustlers, man. Man, come on, man. Go ahead and go home. It stars in your house, man. Stop paying attention to the TV, to the sky. No, none of that, man. You got enough money for them kids, man, for you to develop something, man. We get millions and minutes, man. It ain't number 36 minutes in a fight, man. And we get millions <laughs> and millions of dollars <laughs> and that fast, man. Do you think that street shit is worth it still, dog? Do you really think it's worth it, man? Leave that shit alone, man. Why you think, what do you, how do you think they get drawn into it? Do you feel like it's just temptation and that's No, God doing? give you enough money, King. He give you enough money for that development of, of the kid. The one blessing you get and the one responsibility you get as a, as a child, if you get a chance to get it. 
because I've been living a long time. I only had, it only happened four times for me. <laughs> only happened, I only got four times. I only got four times I got blessed with a, with, a, with a baby. You know how many times I didn't? Come on, man. How many times, you? how many kids you got? Two. Two, look. Them is blessings. Them is only, you, we, we choose the Rolls Royce. We pick the house. We pick all the other shit, but a lot of picks those times that you're going to get together with that particular partner and have some kids, man, I just take mine a little bit more serious. That's all. Yeah. You dig? Yeah. I've always, I've always did that. But I know I think that a lot of that comes from being from Oakland and being the the eldest one, you know, because I had a little brother. So I already know how treacherous and how vicious niggas is going to be because they be scared to death. So, so they want the little homie to go do it. They want the little homie to go crash out. Especially DB's Oakland, nigga. That's not the easiest place to grow up in, bro. It's not. It's very rough, and you got to know how to maneuver around there, bro, because you get your ass, man, amped up fast playing around there, and then you get knocked off quick being ignorant. You know, so I'm glad that you you try to show your sons and show your family, like, hey, man, we don't have to do this to get money. No. We don't have to engage with what everybody else is doing. I don't want to see my sons get no sentences or lose their life out here playing. Here, let's go make some money together. Absolutely. I'll show you. See, I like that about you, though, BH, because you ain't just going to tell your kid to go get some different money. Here, let me show you how. Absolutely. I'm going to show you how. I'm going to get hands on with you. I'm going to put all my time into you and show you that, hey, we can develop you into something amazing. Absolutely. That's that's the whole thing that I said is when you got real money mm -hmm. to me. And I ain't saying if to What's everybody. Real money to you, BH? Listen, come on. Uh, I mean. <laughs> What's real money? Because we got to okay. know your definition. When, when you have enough that you have a car, you have a place, you have something to eat. You know what I mean? When you have enough for you and then you have enough for your kid. You don't have enough. You might. So and that's see, rich to you. That's, that's rich to, to me. That's yeah. enough money. That's enough money because there's been times that I've had where no matter what the house, the size of the house, no matter what the car was, I still needed money for gas. I still needed some groceries. Mm. You know what I mean? When you got seven bathrooms, you got you need seven rolls of toilet paper. When one nigga, when one bathroom man, is one bathroom is low, nigga, we low on money, nigga. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What was it like? Uh, what was it like when you went to Jay Z's house? Um, amazing, <clears throat> amazing. You been um, around a lot of rappers, a lot of stars. Bitch. Oh, listen, ain't they no, fuck with you, bro. Listen, ain't no, ain't no doubt. Listen, and and Jay Z being, um, you know, at the pinnacle, at the tip top of. Um, Star power, going to his house, and and everyone says, okay, well, what would you take, the five hundred thousand or take the meeting? Absolutely, I'm gonna take the meeting. Cause you've had bread, so for you, you're like, maybe I can get something out this conversation that can take me to a whole nother level because you've been having the money. You're like, fuck, fuck five hundred thousand. There might be something I get out of this conversation that could take me on the rest of my life. One one sentence, one I, thing. I, no, absolutely, and and most people view it as instantly you're going to want to hear something about some money, and it's going to um, set you on that course. But um, for me, right, I wasn't. I went into it open minded and and willing to listen. But the thing that I I, I learned from him when he said that uh, that it's like. It's like it can be heaven one minute and then it can be a hell when he looks around and he doesn't see his daughter or his daughter is not around or something that, and for that minute, he's like, oh my God, you know, his whole world is shook up. And for me, it's the same way with my daughter and with my sons as well, you know, especially being the young ones. Um, and that let me know that, you know, I was on the right course. That every man, that every man, no matter what, the money is, no matter what the status, when it comes down to it, is it's the relationship that you have with your kids, the comfortability, where they are, and all that in life, you know what I mean, that you look back on. Speaking of heaven and hell, do you feel like heaven and hell is what you make it? Um, no, I, I mean, like actually. You have heaven on earth or hell on earth? Well, you can, definitely, you can definitely have that. You can definitely have that, but I also believe that Allah gives um, heaven to some on earth, and then um, 
he he lets them know that um you know when you get to when you get to judgment day, well you had your heaven and you didn't you didn't you didn't do everything that you could have did while having the heaven. So now you have hell. And then I believe that you know if there are people that that suffer, um, you know, to make others' uh, lives better, who who might experience a little bit of hell that will eventually re receive paradise, you know. So you know, I mean, like uh, for me. For me personally, uh, shout out Rebo, man. I see you, boy, in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and yeah, for for me, um, definitely, when you're not living out your passion, um, and you're not, uh, you haven't found your purpose, then um, it can be hell. And for me, you know, living in that life, and and I was always like, I would have all them queasy and all them feelings, and you know, all that that anxiety and shit like that. And I'm like, man. You know, we got all the fly shit, but I just don't feel good. You know what I mean? And now to um to have that kind of money again in life and and but to not have that anxiety, not have those queasy feelings, to be with my family and to be doing things positive and not necessarily looking over my shoulder and stuff. You know, I, I you know, I, I say that, you know, now is the time that I wouldn't have believed if you had told me um, you know, twenty or thirty years ago that the better times was ahead of me. So then I say to a lot of the families, a lot of the hustlers, I was like, man, don't crash out. I was like, man, bro, if you would have thought like back in the days, like with me, that for some conversation with a guy or some chick that I crashed out and now couldn't be right here. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm telling them, I'm like, no, nah, don't do that, player. You dig? You might be the one that spit out that next LeBron or that next... <laughs> You know what I mean, Jordan, or that next Michael Jackson, or that ne that next. You dig? Yeah. And 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 it's just, and it's just growing, and it's just bubbling. You know you, what I mean? You give good game and good conversation to a lot. I can tell, and you influence a lot. Where do you get yours from? Like, who do you get to turn to? Because it seems like a lot of people turn to you. You know? Yeah. In physical form, who right. is there anybody? Because I know you're gonna say a lot. Like that's who I turn. To, right. You know, but right. who do you turn to that you really can have like that heart to heart conversation like and get some advice? Well, it just it's easy because it goes back to what do you what would you like? You know, it, it just and it's whether it be in the in, in the Bible or the Quran. Mm -hmm. I mean, a natural feeling of doing to others as that you would want done unto you. You know what I mean? My grandmother kind of always taught me that. So, you know, coming in, it was it was hard for me. You know what I mean? Like I didn't I didn't come from a family that had been in the game. You dig? So, you know, I'm going to get, you know, they're going to try everything on me. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, see, you smile because, you know, <laughs> you're going to get tried. You dig? So to everybody that's jumping off the porch and then they tell me, you know, how great they doing. I said, man, knock it off, man. You yeah. dig? You around this motherfucker struggling and smuggling and hoping that you're going to get picked up. And, and, and you know what I mean? Shit going to work out, you know. But I think I can talk more to the players and the hustlers around the world and tell them to knock it off with that. You can. So, so, so yeah, other kids. Influence. Yeah, yeah, but then, then, then that inspires other kids like Devin, right? Because I told him, I was like, man, don't look at Pops. I said, man, look at Floyd. You know what I'm saying? I said, look at him, dog. You know what I'm saying? And when you look at him, you look at a guy that's 150, 160 pounds like you are, that you, you have grown to be. Five and nine, five ten, whatever you know what I mean. Like around what he is, you dig. So and you see him making a whole lot of money in minutes. So when you when you when you have an opportunity for someone to see something in one of the youngsters and then have the wherewithal to connect them with 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 someone else that's successful in that, other than just like saying, "Hey man, look at me, man. Focus on me. Pay attention, man. I'm a bad motherfucker." When really, really you. You might be a bad motherfucker, but you can definitely help that youngster to be better than you. Right. That's real shit, though. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> Speaking of Floyd, yeah. what's a fun one for you? Who you got? Uh, Floyd Mayweather and 50 Cent are they, they about to get ready to get out, right? They go, who, who would you have about that fight? Had a 50 and 4. 50 can box. Heard he got a little squabble Yeah, on. I don't think that they're going to. I don't think that. I don't think that they're going to box. No, I don't, you don't think so? No, I don't, I don't think that. I don't think, you don't that think there's enough box. money that. Cause come on, you know Floyd gonna come for the bag. Huh? If you got a bag for Floyd, he got about six, seven good rounds in him. Give him a million around. You can Listen, show <laughs> the last the last good fighter Floyd got in the ring with was Devin Haney, and he ain't been in the ring with no good fighter since then. Yeah, yeah. 
That was about when Dev was 18, I think before the Conor McGregor fight. Yeah. From that point on, I knew Floyd knew that he had passed the torch. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I started. Name, bro. <laughs> what? So, you know, that was right around the time I started talking a whole lot, a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I knew that Floyd, he don't, when, when he's sparring, and you go look at all the sparring, he whips ass, bro. He do. He whips yeah, ass. Like he does those uh, those doghouse joints, right? Yeah, where yeah, they yeah. Just you fight till you're done. Right, right. So you ever let right. Devin do it? Yeah, with like that, fight till you fight till. What well, I was it. that was the one that I had won the money on with Tank when when uh, when we had bet. I bet with the Cle against the Cleveland mob, and then I think Floyd and them, Floyd and Ryan, um, put out a uh, highlight tape. I was betting like, oh, right, let's make the bet. Yeah, I mean because. With with Broner and them and them Cincinnati and them Cleveland dudes, yeah. you really they they be on the ga on on the gambling shit. And this was before I took my Shahada, you know. So I, you know, I mean, you know, I had some some stacks around. You know, yeah. So why so, not? Yeah, why not? You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> let's make it happen. And you know, but the best thing is that I was able to take the money after Dev cooked uh, Tank, and then I was able to double it. So he cooked. It. He cooked. Tank Davis in the, in the match. Oh, man, I took, oh, man, I took the money I won, man, and I did some phenomenal things with it. I'm still, <laughs> I'm, I'm still living off of a player. That might, be one, that, that might be one of my accountants right, right there. You did. Phenomenal <laughs> yeah, I did. With that oh, I did some phenomenal things with the yeah. money, man. I'm still here never smiling. Never fuck with a player, man. That's oh, a problem. Man. You never fuck with a player, <laughs> man. It's crazy. You had a few stacks. The way to put them up. I yeah. took mine easy. No problems. Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't we didn't bet anything on the on the Floyd sparring that was strictly yeah, I knew yeah that. it was no but that one was strictly about doing a check to see what's happening because of course Devin had already sparred Tank in the in the in the doghouse I mean Devin had already sparred Shakur in the doghouse so I mean and Floyd for people that's not familiar with the doghouse the doghouse is you show up you go for as long as you can round for fucking round until somebody says I'm done or you drop. Oh yeah, well. So somebody had to say they were done, or got dropped in that fight for them to for take. Yeah. That's well, the boy Shakur, he said, I, he said I stopped. I'm done. I'm tired. Shakur Stevens. So, yeah, I'm done. I'm stopped. I'm tired. That's on YouTube. You can go check that out. Devin Haney versus Shakur Stevenson. I'm tired. Shakur Twitterson or Stevenson, whichever one. And then you got, you got, you got Jazz. Dev. You got Dev and Tank. You go on there on YouTube with not just a highlight film, but you go and ask the. YouTube community and just type in, did we win the money? Because we won the money. And then, you know, um, of course we did the check with uh with with Floyd himself. And that was a that, but but with all fairness, that was respect and it was a an privilege and an honor to Devin to experience it mm -hmm. and to get it. But but when you talk about talking about it, um <laughs> <laughs> of course. I'm going to talk about it. I mean, we're just talking about it. I mean, I didn't right. set up. No, I didn't set up the second sparring session because they didn't want to set up the second sparring session. But we was available if he wanted to do it again. So do you, you know feel what I mean? Like in an actual match, you feel like Tank may be ducking Devin at this point. Because I feel you, like you it's said it, Church. Happen. Because I feel like it's going to eventually happen. It's working its way up to it. I don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe in the next couple years. Maybe in the next three it might happen. But I definitely see a Devin Haney, Tank Davis fight coming. And boy, that's going to be for the motherfucking records. That's going to be for the history of all this shit going on right now. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Floyd's big, but those two boys up in that ring, Man, bro, Floyd A. Church, you you've done your thing. These these kids are gonna be they're they're already the the greatest thing out. Those two kids hop in the ring, man. We're talking, fuck, at least a hundred for a beach. Gonna walk away hundred fifty. Something stupid. It's gonna be something fucking crazy, and I already know it. And I know you, you're not only a good friend to your son, you're a good business partner too. And you make sure that boy going if he's gonna get in there, it's gonna have to be something that he can't refuse. Because if he's already beat up on the boy in a sparring match, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, we ain't got nothing to really prove. Unless you put up some real bread. Like, unless there's some real bread to be had at it. I'm talking something stupid. Super fight money, we're talking in super fights, honey. 110, maybe. Well, I mean, you know, we're in the town. 
start. You know, yes, I mean, we're we in the town yes, and we sir. got all them pretty things lined up. We got everything. We got everything that, that makes the dance partner the ultimate dance partner. What the money going to be, it's going to be. You dig yeah, what I'm saying? You know, man. yeah. It's but be a billionaire off this shit. Yeah, well, I mean, it's going to come. That part of it, you know, you got to negotiate for it, but you got to get you got to get both parties willing to get in the ring and make it happen. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, part right. of it, part of it is coming to the to the sharp tank and and you know what I mean really putting this thing down and letting the yeah. people know so um they can demand it you dig is boxing is it is is it more to get the business side done than the actual fight like to get the paperwork done make sure everybody's signed on make sure he's agreeing for the weight agreeing for the gloves like you feel like that's more work than the fight itself I mean, you know, with this with this thing, either you want to do it or you don't want to do it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? He says all that that's should it. be bypassed. Yeah, man, all that shit. doing all that, he says something's wrong. Yeah, 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 something's absolutely. Wrong. That's crazy, man. Absolutely. Were you, uh, were you scared when Bernard Hopkins asked you to meet him in the bathroom to fight that night? Hell no, I wasn't scared. <laughs> Hell no, I wasn't scared. <laughs> I'm, 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 Church, I just, uh, yeah, 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 no, no, absolutely. Asked. No, absolutely. Um, you know, I, like I told him. I mean, what happened? Then, Can you like give I, me a, a debrief of what the fuck even? Because I didn't even I mean, know that you got in, even had any type of altercation with Bernard. No, I think that Bernard that was that was something that he realizes now that you know doesn't work. You really yeah. wanted them people, doesn't, bro. Like doesn't yeah yeah that doesn't that doesn't ro- work. Um, nah. You know, nor um, do you think that uh, you can um, bully me or you can get me out of out of my position. You can trick me out of my position. You know what I mean? Um, of course, as you can see, you know, I was going to go. favor you, the devil do too. Yeah, I was I was prepared yeah. at that point in time to go um, to jail, hell, or wherever about uh, <laughs> <laughs> the situation. You know what I mean? It didn't, it didn't matter to me. Um, but, but of course, Bernard, um, he did that, you know, the Philly roll, and uh, he rolled on about his business. You know, I wish him Wish him well, you know what I mean. Um, you know, as long as he, uh, you know, it, you it doesn't need to go any, it, bro. You're go a any very further. humble guy, like you, because you really could talk some shit, but you really kind of like sit back and just don't really give a fuck. I got another question for you, man. Um, you actually turned down a deal with from Floyd Mayweather. Was that you? Know what I'm saying is that why or y'all probably? It seems like y'all aren't on good terms, or are you guys on good terms? Well, I mean, I think um turned down a damn deal with Floyd. No, well, I think that right now um the the biggest fighter that he has on his roster that he's built has been Javante Davis, correct? Correct. Um <laughs> so so I would think that, you know, what he's built with with, with uh, Mayweather promotions, Javante Davis has, has been great. It's been phenomenal. Phenomenal and yeah, I think for what, sure. what Devin Haney and Devin Haney promotions has built with Devin Haney it's has crazy. also been phenomenal. Yeah, it's crazy. So um so far it's uh you know, Floyd won, uh, Floyd Mayweather won, Bill Haney won. You know what I mean? He's developed mm-hmm. one, and I've developed one too. And that's so how you looked that, at it. And that's how I looked at it from from the very beginning. I said, that, yeah, I said definitely we can do we can do that on our own, have our independence, and still represent this shit. So, and it'd be a blueprint uh, and green print for another father and son, and inspirational to them. But if we if we had took the the easier route that we felt. Um, and just did it with Floyd and more less more convenient, then it would falsely describe uh it you know what the story. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And and, and it and it would right. be a it would be a false uh description of what we really could have did because yeah. what we could have done is what we have done. And instead of being lazy or being insecure in the moment and saying, Okay, Floyd, give us the paper instead of you just putting the leg down. So I mean that's what we wanted to represent and that's what we did. Yeah, he ain't understand you a businessman too, church. So you know business. He's like, nah. And I feel like it would really, and I have to say that again, I feel like it would really taint the journey some. It's right. like, damn, you got with Floyd, of course. Right. All right, of course, this is what happened. Instead of showing that this was going to be the journey regardless. Right. This is what was going to happen. No distractions. We don't need no no cover-up or blanket laying over with Floyd's name over it. This will be all Devin Haney. Right. And and th- and that that's, like I said, all these are, or opportunities to show how great we are. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even going with uh, Bernard Hopkins, you know, when when you work to get in this position, it's easily for the guys to get tricked off the street. You know what I mean? And I know everybody is watching. And, you know, for me to be able to assess it and say, okay, 
with Bernard Hopkins, that's it. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> that's fucking it. You dig? So hopefully, right, right. right, right? So right, hopefully, right. some other dad or mom aren't buffaloed into thinking that it was going. It's going to be more because that's it. You dig? That was it, bro. You know? I don't know how you do it and how you get the fuck up around all these stars and celebrities because you've been around them for years. Obviously, it's about to, for what I'm about to say, I've heard, I've heard you've had the actual chance to meet Tupac. Yeah, absolutely. How was that, man? Man, that's you how know. Was listen, the brother. For when I mean the brother. Listen, so so Richie Rich is a good friend of mine. You know, he's from deep. He's from Oakland. He yeah. deep East Oakland. He Where brought. Rich? Yeah, he brought. He brought Tupac. Um, around us, you know what I mean, um, for, you know, several different occasions. And, you know, the the Tupac that I got a chance to meet was a gentleman. And that's what represented us, you know what I mean? It wasn't the same Tupac that everyone else um, has had the pleasure of meeting that I see on social media and stuff like that. I met the early on Tupac, you know, this was Brenda's got a baby and all that kind of right, stuff. Right, right. You know what I mean? Then it changed so, up. Well, that's why I fucked your bitch. And then it just like, yeah, you're right. And then it just kind of jumped off the deep end. Yeah, see, and that's it's and that's it changed drastically. You're right. Well, 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 that's always the thing. It is that if you really from the soil, then you could have never been a blood, or you can never be a crip. You know what I mean? Because if you from up our way, then that that's not what we that's not what we have. We got blocks. We got you know what I mean. We got circles, cliques. We got anything, but we don't have. And it's representative of who that that street, that area, that whatever that beef, whatever that's there. You know, we've never adopted anyone else's culture, anyone else's traditions or anything on ours. So independent. I always say this is the this is the Mac Dre shit of boxing. This is the two short shit of boxing. This is this is Master P when he first came uh, to Oakland, when he started his shit in Vallejo and Oakland and all that. This is that and boxing. And, and you know what I mean? That's why I say that Devin is the, the face of the sport, because when you look back on it and you ask the kids, you look or you look on it today and you ask the kids, well, what way would you want to do your career? Who would you want to pattern your career after mm -hmm. right now? And I guarantee you most fathers and sons, mothers and, and, and sons will say, Devin Haney. Like I said, when I seen him at the press conference and Ryan's up there on this fucking tangent about, yeah, I've done drugs, like, I even see a devil. He was like, hey, bro, that's a bad idea. I don't think you should be saying that, gang. Like, we got little kids that look up to us, bro. Like, you can't be on here admitting your vices, my man. Like, I, I feel like whatever you do, some of that shit need to stay in, in, your, in the privacy of your own home, dog, or in the privacy of your life. Sir, some shit should not hit the forefront of the cameras and the media, especially in boxing, because you can be hot today, not tomorrow. You do some stupid shit, you do something dumb, it can really cancel you. You know what I'm saying? It can really get you the fuck up out of there. You know what I mean? They, and they don't care how great of a boxer that you are. Yeah, but you know, they got this thing. You know, I used to go to the Lux Theater in yeah. downtown Oakland and watch the karate movies. It was called The Drunken Master. Yeah. You dig? For sure. That was a style, yeah, that was a, a technique. Style. It was the Drunken yeah. Master, you know, style. So, you know, and then you got uh, uh, the, the, the Bill Clinton them, and I didn't inhale. You know what I mean? With the weed, you know what I mean? So he just put it to his mouth and he didn't inhale. But we all thought that it was, you know what I mean? You dig? So it's all kind of little shit that goes on in this fight game. It's the one game that everything goes. There's no stops. You know what I mean? The man called my hair nappy. You dig? I said he had a toupee. You dig? We, you know what I mean? We go back and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know that that's the first thing that hit them. You dig know, when they yeah. when they want to go when they want to go, right? Yeah. They want to join, you know what I mean? They want to start talking about uh uh you know the hair and all that other shit. So, so I got on them. That's a real good one for you, BH. What do you think about uh cuz I know you know Mike Tyson. Yeah, what absolutely. About, what do you think about his upcoming fight? Um, you know what? I've been hearing a lot. Of, it, listen, no, no. I, listen, I I don't I don't know. I don't um I don't uh I don't think, you know, I don't think that you can keep putting your hand in that cookie jar, you know what I mean, and just keep going in there, you know, and coming up with these, you know, these these uh, these shows and this this stuff where I think that from what I'm hearing that it might not be to Mike's advantage, uh, whether 
that and being the rules, that being the rules or whatever. But by it not being in Mike's advantage, it becomes an extreme disadvantage to him and his brand and his legacy. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Jake, Jake can get you out of there now. You know what I mean? Jake has that that neutralizer. He has one, too. You know, of course, Mike is legendary. Um, but I think that in terms of getting in a boxing ring, Mike has more to lose than Jake. They both got money. They both have brands that will continue to make money to the end of time. But Mike's brand will be on the line when they fight. And you know he's a friend of mine, so I'm not going to tarnish. Is. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tarnish the fight or his opportunity to get some money. Cause he'd be like, "Nigga, I'm getting this money, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> you know what are you talking about?" I'm saying this. So I respect. I respect his hustle. It's just I'm pulling for him, but I know the entrepreneur and Jake. You know he's a friend of Devin's, and and you know he's always been there and been vocal for us. Um, I think he's doing. Devin is doing something with with Prime as well right now or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's uh. It's two guys and two brands. So. That's because hey, I know you know both of them, so you're kind of like uh, Mike's my friend. You know, I'm yeah. cool. My son's cool with Jake. I've met Jay. You know Jake. Yeah, so, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I think Mike still got something in that gas tank. Bro. He do. And let's be honest. We he all do. know if that nigga click, it's some he, shit's gonna. No, click. he you do. But saying? I'm gonna like, tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. Jake does not mind. He will make. He will have a stipulation that Mike has to tie his hand behind his back, or <laughs> he has to wear a one eye patch. Jake don't care. Jake yeah. will come out and do the shit yeah. and make it still an event where Mike it has, you know, ability to do something, but he has to overcome something. Just y'all stay tuned. Mark my words. That fight <laughs> is going to have something to it, and you're going to still tune in because Jake is a master at what he's doing, and Mike is who Mike is, yeah, a legend. I watched his workouts, Mike's workouts. Crazy. Oh, absolutely. He still got speed, still moving the right way, still pivoting the right way. Yeah. Like, he still got some spunk there. Man, Church. Mike has always, always been a friend to not only me, but my whole family, you know, um, yeah. Zip um, out of Harlem, you know, um, Eric Von Zip introduced us. And um, it's always been love. He's, he's always been there yeah. uh, for us, you know what I mean? And like I say, you know, if, if we had been vocal about Mike and, 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 and a sense of, using Mike and Mike's platform, then that will be, once again, something that will um, will be a, it will make people think that you got to meet up with Mike Tyson. No, you don't have to meet Mike Tyson, yeah. right? You have to listen to what things that Mike Tyson has said because he, everything he says to us, he says to the people, you know Mike. Yeah. Mike is 100% yeah. transparent. Everything yes. that he says there, he says. Now, I'm saying is with with Jay Jay Z, it doesn't take for me. It reiterated the fact that it's okay to to um feel for your kids, feel feel for your daughter, and be you know what I mean. Be worried and all the stuff. That's yeah. all part of it. You know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. That it's you know it made me understand that no matter how much money you have, that'll never change that. So if if it's all about money and taking away worries, then the ultimate worry. Um, will never go away, and that's the benefit of having kids. So it made me gravitate more towards my parenting and, and stuff like that. So, man, I've met some tremendous people in my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I met, a, yeah. you know, and Mike, matter of fact, Mike and Mike's daughter and, and my son play tennis together. Um, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Mike, intro Mike introduced me to Sean's first first coach, Coach James. Um, so, you know what I mean? Like, it's... um. It's a small world. It's a small world. Like, and that's, it seemed like Mike, he ain't just your friend. It seemed like it's family to you. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. You really fuck with Mike. And I'm going to be honest, bro. Roy Jones even said it. He said, that shit hurt. He yeah. said, that boy play. He said, when that boy was hitting me with them shits, he said, that boy's shit still hurt. Man, Mike is, man, Mike is every bit. Mike, listen. Mike is every bit of, hey, Sean, take this phone from me. And put, put it, what's on for me? You can come grab it. Come, come grab it. Church. Come grab it. Turn it off. Bring it to BF or whatever. Um, no, man, Mike, you know, Mike, listen, listen, Mike is my family, but Mike is intimidating just in person. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Just his presence is just intimidating. He's my man. We ain't never had no disagreements or nothing. But Mike got them big ass hands. He got that <laughs> attitude. You dig? And he'd be looking at you. He'd be looking around. And I say, Mike, what's going on? Everything cool? 
And he's nothing, man. Everything is cool, man. And he's groovy, baby, and all that. And I said, okay, Mike. <laughs> I love Mike to death. For you, BH, let's talk about your own boxing skills. Yeah. Do you ever challenge Devin to a father-son sparring match to show him who's still boss? And who? And if you do, who usually wins those? You know what I'm saying? Man, listen. If, if Dev can't <laughs> handle me in 0.5 seconds, then shit, we in trouble. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I'm a real player, man. Yeah, you dig? Right, you ain't got no business be touching on me and shit, hitting on me, putting your hands on me. Come on, Sharp. We're at the Sharp Tank, man. Oh, you know? man. Yeah. All right. We, you answered that one better. I thought it was going to be some bullshit. But, yeah. but he answered it very well, extremely well, if I should say so myself. So um, what sets your coaching apart from other trainers, like Devontae's trainer, Calvin? I mean – they learned it in a garage, man, back, you know what I'm saying, in Baltimore somewhere, you know what I mean? I learned it right there um, in the, the Mecca, Las Vegas, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, Where everybody sure. are during that time they come through. I learned it from, you know, Floyd Mayweather Sr., Roger Mayweather, Eddie Mustafa, cool. Virgil cool. Hunter, you know, Billy Giles, you know what I mean? Um, I've learned it from the baddest guys in the game, you know, Freddie Roach, uh, man, I, you know, the list goes on. Man, no, listen, it's 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 deep. It's deep. Um, you know, Roy Jones, you know, we got a chance to spend a lot of time with Roy Jones. So um not only, you know, James Tony, um, not only does Devin experience it from a fighter perspective, but I also was able to experience it from a coaching perspective because I knew what the assignment was. Yeah. And when it when it comes time to um I'll have another coach just standing there and I'll say, no, I'll give him a second. I know what he's doing. Because we can even have Roy Jones in the corner, which Roy is my man. Good dude, good, good dude. And I can, I, I, I can tell him, I said, okay, well, Devin will do Roy Jones, but he'll also do the Floyd Mayweather. Or he'll also do Eddie Mustafa, come back with the hook. He'll take a look like Roy Jones. You know, roll in, roll out like Roger. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, uh, you so know. you say Devin's style is a gumbo. It's a gumbo pop. You man, got a little bit of everything in that motherfucker. Man, in order to, no, it's the Haney style, actually. You know what I'm saying? It was everything that I knew to make um, a, a, the, as close to a perfect fighter because I would understand, okay, because we paid for it. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. like anybody was coming in and saying, okay, if I'm going to coach him, then, you know, I don't want any other coaches. They came and they said, um, they said, I heard that you paying for your son to learn how to box, huh? You want him to learn this shit, what's going to cost you? I said, man, ain't no problem. Whatever it is, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. We're going to get it back when we get it back. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right, hell yeah. And, and, hell and yeah. through that, you dig? Because one thing that I wanted, I want also fathers and, and mothers and stuff to know, especially in boxing, is that my relationship wasn't with the fighters. Mm. You know, my relationship personally, I, I never tried to, get cool with Floyd Mayweather Jr. I was like, what am I, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I, any more cool than what we already were, right? I wanted to learn from the father. I want to learn from Roger. I want to learn how to really put that thing down. You know what I mean? Virgil Hunter um, is the trainer, long time and one time trainer of Andre Ward. So and to get to prevent and, and all those things that, that Ward does that he does special, I went to the person that taught him. So I always felt like if you want to really get the game, then go get the game from the person that taught him. And when you talk about those other trainers, well, I mean, they know part of it, and they, and they got a good part of it where they were able to get it at. For me, you know, I traveled the world to learn this shit. Mm. Would you or have you trained any other kids? Yeah, absolutely. We got, we got, some, we got some two fighters that are going to be on the card, Amari Jones, 11-0, and Shamar Canal, who's 5-0, and Amari Jones representing Oakland and, um, you know, the Bay Area in general. And then also Shamar Canal, uh, he represents, represents New York. Okay. That's going to be live right there, bro. I was just curious. I'm like, man, yo, like you said, you do have the Haney, a Haney style. Like, there's a way of fighting, you know. So I'm Absolutely. just curious if you was willing to pick up some other kids and Absolutely. really show them, like, what's going on. Because... If you can do it for Devin, I'm sure there's other kids that were just as hungry if you could see that fire in their eye, that hunger. You know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. When, when we first started the game, they were like, 
it, it can only be one coach. Mm -hmm. It can, it, you know, they said because within making that gumbo, you always have you, you always have that risk of too many chefs being in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is what they would say. Yeah. I believe that um, coming from also a sports background and and a music and stuff yeah. like that, that yeah. we I could bring something in that would help on the offensive side and the defense as well. We work on our defense because we have a defensive specialist at that particular time, and then we have an offensive specialist, right? Well, now we have coaches that have speed, and then we have a coach that has the body vest, and, you know, we have, like, different stations of coaches all to get out this one vision that I have of uh, the perfect fighter. The perfect fighter. That's called right there, man. That's come out of a movie called The Perfect Fighter. I'm about to put some money in that motherfucker. I'm with it. I'm you know with it, man. You did, you did. call it the perfect fighter. That motherfucker Listen. go crazy. Do you, uh, back to even, I guess I got to ask this one. Do you think that Floyd would fight Devin in an exhibition for the right amount of money? Even though I know they've sparked, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, they've gotten in there. I mean. Whatever happened. Like, but do you think Listen. he would do it for, you know what I'm saying, get in there? He'd do everything else for some money. Why not? Why the fuck not, man? <laughs> <laughs> Gang, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. So, uh. You know what I'm saying? We already talked about the Ryan Garcia antics. I don't even want to talk about that shit no more. How do you uh, how do y'all normally celebrate Devin's victories? Um, it used to be Dev liked it to go get pizza and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Now <laughs> <laughs> He said, Man, those was the days. <laughs> yeah, those was the days, you know what I mean? Those was the fucking uh, days. Of course, you know, we try to do our best not to prepare for our victory, you know what I mean? We just want to, you know, stay focused, stay working, you know what I mean? And inshallah, when a victory happens, of course, that's when the fireworks and all the magic, you know what I mean? That's um, what I was asking. Like, yeah, yeah. You know well, last time, last, last time, last fight, um, I just think he took a private plane back and home from, from the Bay, and um, we had a chance to, you know, go to the room and talk and, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, bond, hug, you know, and talk, you know what I mean? Those are real special moments after the victory. And then he goes back to living what he, you know, the life that he lives, a rock star. Yeah, because he definitely lives a fucking rock star life. That yeah. boy got damn near a million dollars in his mouth. Don't think I'm stupid. I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. This yeah. shit go crazy. I yeah. ain't gonna hold you. Yeah. Um, what's uh, what's gonna be your reaction when Devin wins that big fight against Ryan Garcia? Because he will be winning that fight. Inshallah, I will love it. <laughs> Inshallah, I will love it. Right, and 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 only can hope that you know what I mean. He will give. All praises due to Allah yeah. when when that when that happens and he's victorious. And um, of course, uh, after that, I want to come back to the sharp tank. You I dig love and, that. and you know what I mean and, and kick it and and, re and introduce our next uh, our next opponent, our next uh, opposition. Inshallah. I ain't gonna lie, BH. I love having conversations with you. The time Absolutely, just rolls King. And you got a lot of game, man. You know, and you're very knowledgeable in the boxing game. You know Absolutely, what I'm like you got a lot of game to give. Is there anything you want to tell the viewers? You want to tell DHP fans? No, is absolutely. There, no, just thank you. you. No, leave, no, leave thank you for the, get out of here. Thank you for the platform. Shout out to the production team. You know, Corey for making the introduction and everything. Um, you know, I knew that um, when you know when when my name was sent over to you guys, that the production team did a great job. And put me right here with a real player yeah, man. at the Sharp Tank. You dig what you I'm saying? What so, hey, so yeah. actually, thank you for having I, I me, King. You yeah, absolutely, down, King. Man, and messing with us, man, and just sitting down, chopping it up, and being open about a lot of that shit. I'm glad I got a couple questions about it. You ain't never been asked. He said, oh, that no. shit's wild. Absolutely, he said, I told King. You that shit. <laughs> absolutely, King. You did, hey, you did your research, and I appreciate the so, opportunity. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Hey, the Sharp Tank, no jumper, sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Hey, Donnie, man, uppercut left, right, however the fuck we do it, but shoot us out the motherfucking gym.